Alright, so in this tutorial, I'm going to go over what we uh, did on class, in class, on Monday, February the 13th. Uh, just to go over what we did, some of the issues that came about, stuff like that. So, one of the things I went over first thing was... Uh, what to do when you notice that your uh, footage is not connected to your project when you open it. For example, let's say you were working in class or you were you're switching from your uh, PC to your Mac or the other way around and you brought over your project file and also the folders and everything and so you'd assume that everything will be okay because you have the uh, project folder, everything set up, but it's still disconnected where you end up seeing that um, colored bars, which I'll show right now. I've uh, intentionally mislabeled the project folder name so that um, it will show up as an error. So hopefully it will show up as an error so I can show it here. All right, so I'm here in After Effects, open project. All right, so I'm in my external drive, main folder, After Effects. Well, so here's the main folder, footage folder, project folder. I'll open up the project folder. All right, so it was, uh, it was this one, double click. All right, here we go. After Effects warning, four files are missing since you last saved this project. Now you're gonna see this. Other, several other students had this issue. So how do we fix this? Well, for example, snow covered forest. Or for example, uh, Wind River, okay, that's my uh, movie movie footage. You first select on the footage that has these bars. For example, like I said, my winter movie. I'm going to select it. Then I'm going to right click on it. Replace footage. File. Now, if you still do not have your three button mouse, or even a two button mouse, this is what you can do. Uh, hockey is control H or command H, I believe, for the Max. So again, control H for the PC, command H for the Max. And um, you click it. All right, now, it's just taking me to the most recent place that I went to in my After Effects. So, uh, this folder, but this is not what I need to go. I need to go to my external drive. Here it is. But if you're working on a Mac, your own personal Mac laptop or personal PC, as long as you know where you put, where you set up your uh, folder directory, you should be fine. You know, that's on you in terms of knowing where you put your folder setup. Whether you put it in a desktop, or whether you put it under documents, or whether you put it under, I don't know, the C drive or any other different drive. Anyway, so I know where I put it. It's on my external drive, main folder. Inside of that, footage, main. Then, movie footage. Here it is. This is why I keep on stressing about having your project folder set up with the names and everything. So I select the, the movie, take the pane, Wind River, right there, verify it, click on it, boom. And After Effects is smart enough to know where the other footages are. It's been relinked. Hit OK. There you have it. 
So that is how you relink your footage. Okay. Next. All right. The other thing is I shouldn't have to uh, repeat, repeat this, but I'll do it again in case students were not here. Is sometimes you're looking at your main comp. Here's your main comp. Here's your main comp timeline. Main comp is your container, your canvas, where you put everything in, where all the magic happens. And you know, you're looking at it, still learning, and say for example, you click on that, and you kind of double click by accident, you know, or that, and this happens. You see this weird stuff. It's on timeline with some other stuff going on. Well, you get confused, you know. I know I did, even when after I was doing After Effects for a couple of years, even, where I don't pay attention to what this is going on, and I just start clicking things and just uh, Xing things out, and I finally get to here. Well, the thing is that this, when you double click on that, it activates that footage, and it opens that footage here as a layer. See, layer, wind river, ending scene. This is your la layer, wind river, ending scene. It just double clicks it and opens it. it. Does not open it as another composition. It just opens the footage. So that's that. And all you gotta do is, like I said, go over here, press the X to get out of it. Now it looks like what happened to my composition, right? Like what's going on? All you do is just go back in here, and here it is. Another thing, you want to be careful about accidentally moving things around. You see that? I accidentally moved that. Just undo it. So let's say, or even like stuff like the on the timeline, these bars. I told the class that these bars is equivalent to the length of your footage roll. Like in your, uh, you know, old-fashioned movies. Uh, for example, old-fashioned movie uh, footage reel. Right. See. So. This bar and the footage, imagine that is this. Those are your footage reel. Okay, this. So the length of your footage is determined by the length of these bars. So consider that. And also be mindful, this is your zero point. This is your end point. Okay. I don't accidentally move this stuff around because it can happen. I, I've seen students do it. So always be mindful. And like this one is my main, 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 main footage with the uh, um, uh, dialogue. You know, dialogue and scene. I mentioned to the class that all your other footage and their frame rate determ is determined by your main dialogue scene, which is here. Reason why is that your main dialogue scene, the lip syncing is directly correlated to the frames per second. So I mentioned to the class, let's say you have a really, really cool action scene and you're like, tunnel vision and you're focused that oh yeah that's my that's my uh main shot that's my main footage that everything else and their frames per second you know is based off of that you know let's say for, for example this one i'm gonna uh, or this one right here i'm gonna click this here this means that only this is showing see now it's black this is called solo. 
So new new uh, new trick for you, new tool, solo. Solo means everything else is grayed out. I can only see this. So this one, pretend, uh, pretend this is like, I don't know, uh, uh, action scene and I really like it. And I'm thinking I want to use this frame rate. But then I have this scene. This scene is my, uh, I'm going to also solo that so that I can see this and this only. See? The dot, dot. And, but this has my dialogue. Okay. Well, the dialogue scene is much more important because the lip syncing is critical. And let's say, for example, this one, the frame rate is 24 frames per second. But this action scene, pretend this is an action scene. I repeat, pretend this is an action scene that I got hyper-focused on. And I, I downloaded this off of another YouTube channel. And this frame rate is at, say, 30 frames per second. And if I make this one change it from its default 24 to 30, because I want to match the action scene here, which is 30, and make this 30 as well, well, the dialogue is going to get all messed up and out of sync. Well, potentially, and most likely, like I sure as hell wouldn't do it. Whole point is, regarding the frame rate thing again, because I mentioned this in class, your dialogue takes precedence, its frame rate, over any other action or secondary footage. So pretend this frame rate is, uh, take the pain, I'm gonna yank this over, take the pain, 23.97 well I match everything else to this right and let's say this one let's say this one was 30 frames per second well how do I change the frame rate so it matches my dialogue scene well you select it right click on it interpret footage okay main Again, if you do not have a uh, three button mouse or for whatever reason that you can't get to it, this is how you get to it. Control Alt G on Max, I believe it is Command Option G or worst case scenario, you Google it and you type out, how do I interpret footage for the Mac, uh, for After Effects, how do I interpret? How do I interpret footage for After Effects on a Mac system? Okay. So what I'm pointing out is the key words: interpret footage, After Effects, Mac. If you if you're having a hard time. So, yeah. Anyway, so this is how you get the interpret footage. Boom. And over here, conform to frame rate. I mentioned this in class and so I'm repeating myself again. You set this to the same frame rate as your dialogue. Okay. So let's say my dialogue, like I said, is 23.976. This one is 30. Okay. Pretend. Well, you set this to 30. I um, mean, you set this back down. Pretend this says 30, all right? Pretend. That's what it has. Pretend. Well, actually, the frame rate for the snow scene was uh, 25. So we had to set it to 23.976. And then hit OK. Do not mess with anything else. Do not mess with anything else. Just this. OK. Again, so that was interpret footage. Okay, uh, what else? I also saw, I'm going to uncheck my solo so I can see everything. And I'm going to uncheck the audio for this. I don't know why I have this. I think I was using this as a example. Right, I was using that example. Might as well delete it. Yeah, I'm going to delete. Yeah, yeah, I used that as an example during class.
how to do non-destructive editing. I also noticed uh, uh, another student where the timeline was literally just a second or two. I, I have no idea how that happened, uh, which I'll show. Right now, it's in uh, all these high numbers that is in frame rates, okay? Again, I'm gonna mention what frame rates, frame rates are. Frame rates is imagine a flip book that you, you, that you twirl with your thumb, okay? And each of those pages on your flip book, you had drawings. And imagine you had like, I don't know, you're, you know, like fanatic about drawing and you drew out 500 pages of a stick figure, you know, doing things, okay? 500 pages. So that's 500 flips to go through. Well, that 500 is in, in uh, computer land, 500 frames. Because I mentioned before, each page that you're being flipping is a frame. Then when we talk about frame rate, well, think of it this way. Let's see your uh, flip book. The flipping speed is controlled by your thumb, right? Because your thumb kind of dictates how fast or slow or uh, if there's points where you stop the flip book, right? It's really organic. Well, the act of flipping your thumb and turning the page over is the frame rate. So let's say you just start start flipping the rate, flipping the pages really fast. Well, that's equivalent to a really fast frame rate, you know, or just blasting through the pages. You know, that's a frame rate that's like, I don't know, what, 12 frames per second? You know, so every second you're flipping through 12 pages. Or when they talk about 24 um, frame rate, a frame rate of 24 is basically you're blasting through 24 pages in a second, okay? Or 30, a frame rate of 30 frames per second is you're blasting through 30 pages per second, okay? Again, so that's another review on frame rate. All right, so I went over um, the interpret footage, right? And uh, kind of went off track <clears throat> regarding um, your main comp. So uh, let's say for whatever reason it's super short, which it shouldn't be. In class, I and in previous tutorials, I mentioned that your frame rate, not your frame rate, but the length of your composition main comp, right? Where you dictate the length of it under composition, okay? Right here, composition settings. It's universally the same, whether it be you're on a PC or you are on a Mac. It's right here. Your main comp. So, 1920 by 1080. Width and height, pixels. Frame rate, boom. Well, this one is set to my uh, dialog. So you set your, your composition's frame rate, okay, your container, to the frame rate of your dialog, which is 23.97, 23.97. Then, uh, duration. Well, it's set to 2,520 frames, okay? And in terms of uh, seconds and minutes, this is, should be what, 45 seconds? Yeah, right now it's set to frames. So again, over here, this is where I forgot to mention as well. If I, I mentioned in class, if I go control, left click, it says to seconds, minutes, and hours. I believe on the Mac, it's also control. If not, it's command, left click. Okay, so you, you try it out, it's most likely command. But if not, it's control. Again, control, left click, sets to frames. Control, left click, 
sets to seconds, minutes, and hours. So I'm going to show it here as seconds, minutes, and hours. Why? Because I'm going to go back here on the composition. Make sure you have your main comp selected. If your main comp timeline is jacked up and you only have a couple of seconds and not the necessary 45 seconds, you see here, 45, all right? If you have that situation where it's all jacked up, you go to composition, composition settings, control K, also known as uh, command K, I believe, for the Mac. The whole point. Duration. 1 minute 45. Huh. Why is it 1 minute 45? It should be 45 seconds. Let's see what happens. Maybe this is a typo or something. So I'm, so anyway, this is how you set it to 45 seconds. Which is over here. Where you first switch it to either frames or seconds. Remember that I just went over? Hit OK. Yeah, see, it did change something to minute 45. I mean, from minute 45 to uh, exactly 45. This here is your uh, bar where you can set the, the length of your uh, preview, which I also went over in class. Right now, it's set to uh, preview over here only, but you can go here, and when you press the space bar, it'll preview only here. And this green stuff, I mentioned in class that this is your uh, RAM preview where it stores the RAM footage, its footage, visual footage, memory, information into short term memory of your computer, which is shown in, I believe, in green. The blue means that it hasn't been processed yet for a short term, short -term preview. And I also mentioned that in After Effects, there's this lag time where the computer has to process this. But in uh, Premiere, which is uh, a solely a uh, editing software, but it also has some visual stuff, Premiere does not have this lag effect. It's pretty much in real time from what I know and remember. And that's the greatest difference between, uh, or the most important difference between uh, uh, Premiere Pro and After Effects is this, I think. And also the fact that Premiere, you can have tons of footage to edit and it just makes sense visually that the way that it all puts it together for editing. Anyway, I also mentioned that in class, so I'm going to mention it again. So I'm going to stretch this, put that bar over there. I'm going to grab here, yank it. This now means it's going to RAM preview everything, okay, up to 45 seconds. So, again, this is set to minutes, seconds, and frames. I told the class, I would just set it to uh, uh, frames, okay. Oh, this one doesn't have my uh, fade in and out. Well, I should... I think I'll go over that too. I might have went over that in class. Or, no, I don't think I did. But I'll do it in here too then. Maybe not. Because I already made a tutorial anyway, so why, why make it again? Anyway. So, uh, I'm gonna... Yeah. I'm going to go back. First, I want to select my main comp. You don't have to do this. So I select my main comp. And whenever you want to mess with the main composition, the container, your master container for everything, you select it. If you don't select it, you don't have the option to select it. So you have to select it. Always have to if you want to mess with it. I mean, you know, it makes logical sense. It's just that sometimes we forget. Anyway, I want to mess with it because I want to set it back to uh, 1 minute 45. Because I think there was a reason why I did it. I just don't remember. Right. 
because I had these extra clips. Uh, these are visual clips. Because uh, in the main clip, um, what happened was that I told the class, this is the father, uh, Indian tribe father, his daughter got murdered. And, you know, him, um, he t he's talking to him about how to cope with it, how to deal with it. Because uh, he, he lost his daughter. I forgot to what, but his younger daughter. So they both have uh, family members that they lost. And then uh, he's talking, talking, and uh, now I cued in this visual shots. I also explained this to the class where these are shots from other parts of the movie, and I just clipped it in. So to reflect some of the words that he's saying about grief, about memories, stuff like that. And boom, I put that in, blah, 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 he's talking, boom, I put that in. We're zooming in, walking in, you see the daughter's stuff, her memories, boom, other memories, and finally this. I mentioned this in my uh, other tutorial, I believe, uh, tutorial number two, because I have tutorial one, tutorial one A, and tutorial two. This might have been tutorial two, so I'm not going to go over how to do this. If you want to, well, you got to know how to make these secondary clips. That's in tutorial two. So I went over that. Um, interesting enough, my, my uh, top bar and my uh, bottom bar, uh, this I went over in class. Uh, it got cut out at the 45 second mark, which is not good. Because I had it up to here, or at least up to here. A uh, minute, minute twenty nine. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put up to here, which is a minute forty four and twenty three frames, close to one minute forty five. I'm gonna teach you guys how to uh, stretch this out to over here. When I was a student or just learning, I would just grab it, you know, left click, and I would just drag it up to here, you know, which is the same thing. See, this is my top bar, my bottom bar, and my vignette. But I also share with the class that if you want to pull your, your footage to make it longer, you can select it. Go to the part where you want it to stretch to or to fill up to and you press uh, I believe command no no uh, on the PC it's um, alt and the right bracket see again that's alt right bracket which I'll show right now Alright, so uh, um, come on, give me a break. Alright, so this is your right bracket. You press that to set your uh, end, your end cut. You press your left bracket to set your beginning cut. Right here is your end cut. Left, right bracket to clip your footage within here and for the PC it's the alt key you press alt a l t and then um, you know like I said this or that left or right to determine beginning and end but on the Mac it's a, it's a little tricky where not tricky but all right, so I'm using a PC, but I have a keyboard that's technically a hybrid. 
And uh, my hybrid keyboard that works on uh, PC or Mac, it states to use the command and either left or right bracket. So yeah, it's probably command. If not, if that's not working, it's the option. But I'm pretty sure it's command left or right bracket. It gets a little confusing because I teach other software and they use option as well or they use both. So my hunch tells me it's command and left or right bracket. So uh, yeah, and you know, it's not hard. You just test it out, but it's most like a command. Okay, so I want it to be this long, let's pretend, or even this long. If I wanted to set it exactly here, I can just press a space bar and left click and left and left click drag and snap it snaps it there now I want to make all of this up to here because right now there's nothing here so I'm gonna press my alt right bracket or uh, conversely command right bracket yeah it's command for the Mac all right so that's 30 minutes so, so I went over that. Next, what else is there? Uh, the vignette. I'll go over making the vignette. I'm gonna hide my top. Uh, let me see, vignette. Yeah, did I go over making the vignette first or did I go over making the top bar and the bottom bar? You know what, I'll make the vignette. I'm gonna hide that in that. I'm gonna hide that. Okay, so going over the vignette. When you see this, okay, I'm gonna hide the snow. So here's my footage. And you see this top bar and my bottom bar. But in reality, this top bar and bottom bar does not exist because when I click on this toggle transparency grid, this is what the footage when I downloaded it, it literally looked like. I don't know why, but the letterbox format, whoever uploaded it had this and that's what I have to deal with. All right, good. Stop it. All right, good. Now, this here just just turns on the um, fake default black background. See, if I hide my uh, this footage, my dialogue, see, it's a black background. But if I take it away, there's nothing there. So this shows my fake black background. And now when I uh, turn on my footage, my main one, way on the bottom, boom. I'm gonna get rid of my snow footage. I gotta show how to do that. All right, 33 minutes. Turn that on. Now you see what it, what truly you see. Anyway, so just, I'm gonna do this for now so you can see the vignette. What is a vignette? All right, vignette. Is that, how do you spell? All right. I went over in class. This is a vignette. You see this uh, shadowing here? That's a vignette. The shadowing like old film, you know, like this, the dark areas to fr help to frame it. That's a vignette. Vignette. This is also a vignette. Vignette, blah, blah, blah. Vignette. Vignette. 
Um, and uh, let's say, I don't know, was it Instagram or TikTok or whatever? I think it's a, it's, it gives you that option perhaps as a filter. Uh, but the uh, film fact or film history big uh, vignettes uh, they're they're not made on purpose from what I remember vignettes uh, came about because of old film it's having to do with the I don't know the exposure or the film setting or or a whole bunch of other stuff but and it's uh, naturally it happens because of uh, there you know what what is a vignette in film Hopefully he explains it better than me. Anyway, it's a it's a mechanical feature, uh, I believe. All right, here. So vignette represents the darkening of images around the outer edge of the frame, such as the subtle appearance of darkening appears. Such a subtle appearance of darkening appears to provide visual interest for the audience. Uh, oh, it doesn't say how it came, how it happens. I know that there's a reason why. Uh, whatever. Anyway, so we're gonna make a vignette because it makes a difference. For example, oh, no, I can't use that right now. I'm gonna delete that. So I'm going to make a vignette from scratch. How do you make a vignette? The little darkening around the edges to give it that artistic look. Well, in your main comp, you right click, new, solid. Or layer, new, solid. Control Y or on max, command Y. So that's how you make it. Solid. Black solid two. I'm gonna just name it um black solid vignette. You could just name it vignette, but I'm just call it call it black solid. What is a black solid, first of all, right? Well, it's basically, you could just think of it super, super basic thinking where it's just a black image, a black paper on top that you can modify and tweak to make it more special and do things to it. So it's like an item. It's an item, a black piece of paper item you, you slap on top that you can make, make it transparent. You could shape it into a certain way and blah 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 anyway so that's a solid you could change the color you know to make it red white purple blue whatever blah 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 yellow i'm just gonna make it black down here again it's here black solid vignette don't mess with that hit okay all right now what? And here's the bar. Right now it's colored in red because this is red. This, these guys are colored these colors. All right, anyway. Um, I need to make this smaller. I'm gonna press S as in scale. Okay, scale is S. I'm gonna scale it. But right now I have constraints on, meaning it's gonna scale uniformly. See that? I wanna uncheck that chain. I wanna scale it where it where the top and bottom get squished in. That's here, this one. This here is left to right, see? This here is top to bottom. 
and I'm yanking it with my left mouse button. I'm going to yank it down. I'm going to zoom in with my mouse scroll. I'm going to press the space bar and hold it so that I can pan around. So that's the space bar. Left click, hold to pan. Now it's at 73%. Maybe I'll type in 74. Zoom in a little bit more, maybe uh, 75. So it's perfect. I'm going to turn it off, on. Zoom in some more, spacebar, hold, pan it, left click and hold, spacebar, and the left click. Turn it off, turn it on. So it's a little bit bigger. You know what I mean? See? Well, a little bit more. I'll make it 74.5. See? Perfect. Perfect. So that's, you could make it into increments, you know, but see, basically 74.5. Hold space bar, left click and drag. Mouse scroll to pull out. Why did I do this? Like, what's the whole point? Why do I disconnect that? Why did I scale it? Make it 74.5? Well, now it's, it's the perfect size of my footage. So why do that too? I thought we were making a vignette. I just made a black solid. Well, all I did was purpose is to make the overall container. Because we're going to use this black solid that I said was like a paper. Well, it's also used as a paper and also as a container. But container for what? A well, container for a, what we call a mask. What is a mask? Basically, you're going to mask out a shape that will also generate your vignette. You know, so I basically made this, this black box. And I'm gonna, there's settings that I can make this filter or this gradient, you see? Off of that black box, which was our black solid, which I said a black solid is like a black paper that you can manipulate and make it into something else. So I'm gonna select it, right? You know, if you notice, if I press here, it, it can uh, change the name of it from a layer, the layer, you know, layer one versus the name of your item. So if you ever see this, don't worry, it's just, you, I'll talk about it some more later. Um, anyway, I select my black solid, I'm going to apply a mask. You'll see what a mask is. I'm going to go up here. Okay. Rectangle tool. I'm not going to click on it. What I'm going to do is double click on it. I double clicked and it made this. See? Again, I'm going to undo it. I select my item. I'm going to go over here rectangle tool. If for whatever the hell reason it's not a rectangle, you left click and hold. Again, you left click and hold and you choose which one. Maybe it's ellipse, who knows. You choose rectangle tool. Okay. Now, again, I'm going to redo. I'm going to select it. I'm going to just go to my move tool. Like literally from nothing. You select it, go to your rectangle tool, double click, and see something happen. It says your mask one. If you open it, mask one. I'm gonna close this transform thing. Mask one, select it, open it. Mask path. You notice it's pink here. This line is also pink. It's color coordinated. So the mask, what I'm going to do is right now, it's select. Oh no, it's not selected, but now I can move it. But I'm going to undo it and undo it. I'm going to click out here. I'm going to click here again. Make sure I have mask selected. From here, I'm going to 
left click and hold and drag if you notice I'm gonna press the space bar and pan zoom in zoom in it's a dark colored uh, dot or a square I'm gonna hold my space bar left click and pan pan and move if you notice here this is a open box super critical to recognize this this here is an open box I hope you, hopefully you can see it if not just on your computer you should again open box closed box this one is closed that's a, a square within a square what's my whole point right well if I do this this is what I want to show it's literally a shape that I just yanked that yanked and grabbed on okay I'm gonna un uncheck it so that's your mask now why did I make a mask when I already had that black square and my mask is also the same size as my rectangle well if I click my mask and I invert it, okay, leave this alone, only invert, now you see nothing. But then, this part is important, mask feather. Let's start cranking this. See what's happening? See, it looks like it's burned edges, right? See the burn edges? Boom. I'm gonna click outside and that's how you get your vignette again you need your mask if you don't have a mask this ain't gonna work and I just went over the mask so make make the mask set it to invert again set it to invert mess with the mask feather Make sure your vignette is on top. I repeat, make sure your vignette is on the top. If you put it on the bottom, it goes away. Everything is based on layers. The topmost layer will show the most. All right, so I went over vignette. Let's say I want to make the vignette less noticeable because you can see the, obviously see the burn edges. Well, you can press T. T as in, stop it. It's T as in Tom. That'll pull up your opacity. You could set it to like 50%. It makes it less noticeable. I kind of like that. See, nothing on, nothing on. Also set to 50% opacity. That is T as in Tom. All right, so that's my vignette. Now I need my uh, letterbox for the top and the bottom. How do I make that? Well, I'm gonna have to delete this. Okay. And all right, 48 minutes. This is gonna be exact probably one hour. That's fine. In my main comp, again, right click, new, solid. Or have your main comp selected, layer, new, solid. Control Y or on the Mac, Command Y. Again, I repeat myself, it's the same thing whether it be PC or Mac same thing just slightly different command for the pc it's control y for the mac it is command y black solid um letterbox bottom all 
All right, so just to make sure I double checked, how do I create a solid layer in After Effects? Again, keyword solid layer After Effects, command Y. Okay, so I, I made my letterbox bottom, but it's too big. What do I do? Well, in class, I taught uh, another tool trick, uh, which is uh, moving the pivot point or the point of origin for your object. So what do you mean point of origin? Right? Well, I have it selected. I'm going to press S as in Sam. Here's my scale. And like I mentioned, if I turn off the, the chain constraint, and if I mess with the top and bottom, see how it scales from the center. This is the center and it's scaling from the center. But wouldn't it be nice if I could scale from down here and just squeeze it down? Squeeze this down here right well I'm going to show that right now and that's manipulating the point of origin this crosshair is your point of origin okay I taught this in class so here it is pan behind anchor point that is your anchor point also known as your point of origin I have that highlighted in blue. Next, I want this thing called snapping on. And I want to snap this down here. These are your points that frame your object, how big it is for this guy. But if I deselect it, it's gone. I select it, it's here. If for whatever reason you don't see it, well, I guess that doesn't matter. You want this on too. This will at least show your mask shape that we made before. Anyway, whatever. So I have this checked on. I have my snapping checked on. And you see how my cursor changed different. There's a little rectangle box underneath my cursor now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this. See, it looks different. And see how it's going out of control? Well, it's trying to find something to snap and snap and I'm going to get out of this because it's so active press V as in Victor now the whole point of that is under the scale under the Y which is uh, the left number I can now scale it down I'm going to zoom in hold down spacebar left click and move Zoom in some more with the mouse squirrel. I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna hold on, hold on control and left click to have uh, more control. Boom. Ooh. Maybe uh, 12.8 or maybe 13. Yeah, that's too much. 12.5, that's too little, 12.8, 12.7, okay, 12.8, alright, I'm just nitpicking, but you definitely don't want to see a gap, so that's how you make your first um, part of your letterbox, alright, so that's how you make your letterbox, and uh, like I said, all you do is right click, new, solid. Or layer, new, solid. Control Y for the PC, Command Y for the Mac. You make it, you select it, make sure that you, you move the anchor point or the point of origin this crosshair you click that so it's blue you turn on snapping 
and then you click on it, you left click on it, you grab it, you hold it, and you snap it. And then from there you press S and you scale it down. I'm going to turn off snapping now. Now, if your footage does not have this gap, right? Let's say your footage is filled in completely, right? Or pretty close to it, you know? Then where you don't have to worry about this and this, then uh, you don't need to make the letterbox. But if you have, let's say, a logo down here, I don't know, like Netflix or YouTube or something, I remember one or two students had that, um, you know, off of the, the YouTube channel that they uh, downloaded from, then you want to make the letterbox to hide it. So that's how you make the letterbox. For the bottom one. Now I'm going to make the top one. How do I do that? Well, I'm going to grab this. I'm going to go to Edit, Duplicate, also known as Control D. Okay, so I made a duplicate. I want to first change the name. I have it selected. It's the top topmost one. I'm going to go to Layer, Solid Settings. That's this guy. He's a solid, his settings. But make sure you have it selected. Solid settings, layer, solid settings. Boom, name. Now, I'm gonna name him letterbox top. Wait a minute. No. Is it? Wait, no, no, it is, right? Hit new. There, good, good. I thought I was gonna make a new one because it said new, but just ignore it when it said new. It's, it's, it is what it is. It, it worked. I thought I was gonna make a third one, but it worked because it changed it. Letterbox top. Okay, but but it's it's obviously still down here. What am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna press R as in Robert. Damn it. I'm gonna get rid of that thing and I'm gonna rotate it so you'll see this here the 0.0, .0 I'm just gonna pull left click and pull and you see how it's rotating exactly 180 degrees so not, but you can't see it here because it's outside the area of view but you see it here the length I'm going to press P as in Peter. Again, P as in Peter. X is your left to right. Okay. Y is your up and down. I'm going to pull on the Y up here. I'm going to zoom in. Press and hold space bar. Left click to pan. A little bit more. Hold on my control. And I can kind of control it minutely. Boom. Point one. Yours might be a little bit different. Actually, even just zero. Depends on the size of yours. That's how you make your uh, your uh, bottom one. I mean, your, your top letterbox. And here's my vignette. You can also change the color of your vignette just to uh, refresh um, your memory in case uh, you forgot. You can select your vignette. I'm kind of uh, going off course a little bit, but I went over this in class anyway. Select your vignette, go to your solid settings, layer solid settings, color. Maybe I'll change it to something more sad, like a purple. See? See how it's already updating. Maybe red? Reddish? See? That, it looks like a burn effect. Or more of a purplish? See? 
click outside and then uh yeah good then click outside i don't want to see that outline black solid vignette yeah it's more purple see all right so we did that that all right i pretty much went over everything um your snow i also mentioned to put in a snow well in here i'm gonna double click boom again in here to to import your snow double click all right main folder footage main particles um i i use this one alpha snow swirling snow alpha zero one that one's kind of uh not the best to use is is it's kind of fast it's it's better for like a snowstorm we'll use snow falling with alpha this one snow falling with alpha import as footage do not click that don't experiment, just leave everything else alone, import. Boom. I'm gonna get rid of this, I don't wanna confuse students. Here's my footage. Let's take a look. Alright, it's big, it's uh, 1.1 gigabytes. Frame rate is at 25. And if you look here, it's huge. This is a 4K footage. So it's four times the size of my uh, usual footage, which is at 1920 by 804. More or less, it's, f it's four times the size. That's why it's also a whole gig, which is large, very, very large. This shows you where it's located. H is the location of my external drive. I'm just teaching basic computer knowledge stuff right now. See? The frame rate, I mean, it's an effect. Uh, for now, I'll just leave it alone. And then I'm going to grab it. You just select it. Left click and hold. Okay. You, you grab it. You left click and hold, pull it, and you're gonna dump it underneath your black solid vignette. And here it is, see? When you see it pixelated, that's fine. It's basically just uh, the scene trying to update and process what it's seeing. Another student mentioned that or was getting pixelated when they were playing the film, the footage, and they thought something was wrong. But what it is, it's just a computer and After Effects trying to work together. And um, you see, see what students see that? It's loading up the images, RAM preview. That's what it's doing right there. Like I mentioned before, Premiere from what I remember, it doesn't have to deal with this. Um, yeah, but After Effects, this is like one of its, uh, I don't know, Achilles heel. It's down points. So anyway, I put in the snow. Okay. And if I zoom out, left click, this is its actual size. See how big it is? It's literally four times the size of my original footage. That's because it is a 4K footage. So what am I gonna do? Well, I wanna scale it down to see what it looks like. So I make so it's the exact same size as my footage. I press S as in scale. Right now it's at 100%. I'm gonna leave the chain link constraint on I'm gonna scale down see if you look at the screen 
Boom. Zoom in. And over here, I'm going to press fit up to 100%. So you can fit. So right now, it's still a little bit bigger. But you know, you could make it 50% if you want. It doesn't really matter. It's what you're happy with. I mean, as long as it's not smaller, like 36%, which is obvious, you know. Long as it's outside, like that, or just touching, though that's the general rule. If you make it like I don't know, forty-nine percent, all right. See, even forty-nine is okay, but you're gonna start to see bounding area. Anyway, just fifty percent, whatever. Make sure it's within like that. See the dots. And but uh, it's it's too obvious, so you press T, as in Tom. You set the opacity to I don't know fifty percent. Could do that. And then I also taught this one here, where you see uh, uh well, I don't need to. If you don't see mode, okay, you see here it says mode. If you don't see it. Click here where it says toggle switches. So if you see this and you're panicking, just click that. Now you're back to mode. Not not mode, but where you get to see this option. Now I taught that right now it's set to normal. Well, if you if you click on it, you have this whole thing. Or it just manipulates how the image looks. For example, you could set it to, I don't know, classic difference. And it does that. You could set it to saturation. And it does nothing. You could set it to overlay. You know, it gives off different looks. I just usually set it to overlay. And you could set it to uh, opacity at fifty percent, so it's super subtle. And if you see here, it says that it has a sound to it, but there's no sound. It's just it's been saved, you know, with the option of having sound, but just ignore it. If you want to double check if it has sound or not, you press L. Audio waveform but there's nothing down here just for those who are really, really into learning this stuff L as in Larry and if I zoom in here by clicking this bar see how it, how it stretches over there well I just grab this bottom bar and I go this way I want to show this I'm gonna zoom in some more some more I'm gonna grab this bar you see over here, you see that little gray area missing? See that weird discrepancy? Oh, that's because of the frame rate. Set to 30. I'm gonna just uh, go over here, hi highlight it, see how it turns. See from here? See? It's, it's, it's a editing thing, you know, just making sure that you see my in point and out point, the little marker. And I'm gonna try to play it, but I only wanna play it for maybe, I don't know, four, four seconds. Right now we're set to minutes, seconds, and uh, whatnot, and hours. And let's say I wanna only play up to four seconds, right? Because let's say my computer's not the strongest. Because the longer you make it play out, I'm going to press my Alt and Mouse Squirrel, also known as uh, Command and Mouse Squirrel, to zoom out my timeline. The more you make it play from here, the blue mark, to the end blue mark, the more the computer has to work and process it. So a lot of times when you're learning and or back in the day when the computers weren't as strong, we'd only do increments, let's say four seconds. And the way you do that again is you press the um, 
Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You press N as in Nancy. See that? Again, that's N as in Nancy. I'm gonna yank it. I'm gonna press N as in Nancy, and it ends it. You can think of N as in ends it. N as in Nancy. If you only want to play from here, begin from here. You press B as in Bob, or begin. Okay, B and N, like Barnes and Noble. Let's say I want to play that. You press the space bar. Greece seminar. Went to a Greece seminar. Went to a Greece seminar. You see? So, you know, if you're um, limited in technology power or horsepower for your computer, you can play little increments of seconds and, you know, still get away with it. Um, I noticed that my snow is kind of small. So I'm going to grab my snow. I'm going to press the S as in Sam. Maybe I might scale it back up to like 65%. See how it got bigger? And this got bigger. 65% a little bit more happy but if you look now it went away wait now it's loading 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 all right good I can press space bar seminar. see and maybe I want it to be less visible select my snow press T as in Tom make it 25% there now I'm gonna Press space bar. Went to a Greece seminar. Went to a Greece seminar. Went. Now make it thirty-five percent. Okay, but you notice that this is the end of the line for it. After that, it's gone because that's the end of the footage. Ha. Huh? How do I make it so I can play this forever? Do I just copy and make a copy and paste and make a new layer? You know? Or I can make it loop forever so that it loops forever. How do I make it loop forever? Well, well I went over this in class. It's called uh, time remapping. Again, it's called time remapping. I select my asset that I want to loop forever. And I right click on it. Time. You select your object. You right click on it. For example, in the timeline right click on it this menu pops up you go to time enable time remapping also known as control alt t or command option t for the mac okay command option t All right, so this happened. Made a little dot here, made a little dot there. What does this mean? It means that now I can manipulate the time. So, I'm gonna close it, I'm gonna open it again. Time remapping, here it is. I can select it, okay. It has keyframes. What you wanna do is under this stopwatch, you want to, uh, I believe it's a uh, command on the max. For PCs, it is Alt. Okay. You hold it down and then you left click. Boom. Okay. It, this happens. Again. You go to the stopwatch, you pop this open, you see the time remap. If you don't have this, that means you weren't paying attention and you need to right click on it and do the time remapping. So over here, 
hold command, press and hold, and left click. Time remapping. For the PC, it's a uh, control. Okay, so I'm gonna undo that. Control, left click. Oh wait, no, it doesn't do that. No, 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 right. For the PC, it is Alt, left click. For the Mac, it is Command, left click. This is why it gets confusing. Because Control and Command, they both start with the letter C, you know, and they kind of, you know, mean the same thing, Command or and Control. That's why it gets confusing. All right, so again, for the PC, it is Alt, A-L-T, and left click. For the Mac, it is Command. Hold Command, left click, let go. You have this thing turn into red. And then you have this thing over here, highlight it. You type in, in here, okay, make sure that it's, t it's blinking. L-O-O-P, loop. You're gonna choose loop out. Double click. There you have it. Don't do anything. Just click outside of it. That's how you do it. Okay. Loop out. Now, but we're not done yet. Because when you go from here, you still see it, but now it's gone. So what you have to do is do not grab the diamond. You grab the bar. I repeat. Just grab the bar and left click and drag. And you can hold on, uh, well, you could drag to here and just eyeball it if you want. Or you can drag the ticker all the way over here and then hold on shift and snap. But right now, there's nothing here because I, I cut my footage up to here. See? So that's how you do the, uh, uh, what do you call that, um, uh, infinite loop using the time remap. All right, so that is pretty much everything. Yeah, um, the fade in, fade out, I went over in the other tutorial. So I'm not going to repeat that because it's already hour 17 and doesn't make sense to repeat it. And also because I did not go over that in class. Uh, pretty much everyone did it. So, yeah. Um, I think that's it. Uh, the next tutorial, I'm going to go over what the homework is. I'm not going to explain how to do the homework. That way, um, yeah, that way you don't miss out on anything. And there's no class on next week, Monday. Right? President's Day, I believe, was it? So you got this whole week. You got today, tomorrow. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten or nine days to complete the homework. You have nine days to complete the homework. It's that I'm gonna sign. It is not hard. I repeat, it is not hard. It's literally drag and drop and just changing some things and I go over it step by step. All right, we're done.